Really, all we can say after watching this latest Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic episode is my condolences, which is literally what Asato says, because that was quite the plot twist. Was not expecting that the little old demon Black Knight just needed a little love. I really thought it, as this was all happening that he would be the one who would train her and maybe make sure she could work for the humans, and then she got the fate worse than death. Very similar to how this show started with Rose dragging our boy from a simple, quiet, countryside life to absolute brutality of training, she is about to experience a fate worse than death, and that is freaking hilarious. Full live reaction to this week's episode over on my Patreon. If you want to see my full thoughts to this or any of these episodes, it's over there if you're interested. We have one more to go. It seems like we're setting up on quite the bang. I mean, not only are we getting this mission, this little kind of like we're trying to build connections with other countries, the girl who had, like, the future site is tasking us at saving her mother, which could be a bait of comedy, but I think it's serious. I guess we'll see. But most importantly, the big meat and potatoes, the main course, was what they did with this Black Knight. I really enjoyed that. And honestly, it's one of the rare cases where I'm like, you know, this might just be yet again another potential love interest, given that Rose and, of course, the female hero is also, like, seemingly a love interest of sorts. I mean, even if Rose doesn't show, like, romantic feelings per se, I mean, that's a pretty obvious, like, potential pairing. And then you have a girl who's talk constantly talking about flags being set, him getting the romance pass in order, and he just blows away as she's trying to set her own paths up. The idea of what they did with the Black Knight, I really enjoy because, like, when you think about it, right, if demons could have feelings and do have feelings, I mean, if we flash back to Rose's flashback, the fact that the demon cared enough to protect their leader because they clearly had feelings for them in terms of at least a family or if not respect connection. The idea of how touch deprived many demons might be, especially because I thought we were going to go the route that she follows the strong because ultimately Usada was the only one to ever actually deal damage to her and actually make her feel something. People might want to make the argument, okay, well, why would he want to heal her? She was the enemy, but he's the type of guy who he just couldn't live with himself in this situation, it is what it is. And the fact that it's such a touching scene, because, like, the healing magic's so interesting, because the way he was using it, it absolutely left her on death's doorstep, something she would never feel. And as much as they crack some jokes like she's a big M, it's just like, the fact that he comes in and he actually heals her, and the fact that after it all is, like, done, she's just embracing. She's like, please just do it longer. Being so touch-deprived and having no loyalty to the demons even before that. Like, she was spilling every information that they asked. Like, sure, I'll tell you this. She, like, just frankly didn't care. Seems like she was more of just she wanted to fight strong people. And then Isada comes in and gives her a loving embrace. I honestly think if Asada wasn't there, she would probably give up on Rose's training. Eventually, she would reach the point of, just kill me, I can't do this anymore, this is just, this is ridiculous. Because there's not many people who are like Asada who would put up with it, but then again, she does seem like quite the fighter. But still, she has no idea the hell that's in store for her. But it's interesting that the King's basically, he has an ultimatum. She can stay locked up forever, he doesn't like killing prisoners of war, or Rose can take up the challenge, which honestly... Given where Usada's at, Rose doesn't really have to focus as much on him. Obviously, there will still be training. We saw it in this episode. There will still be guidance. But it makes more sense to give her a new challenge in the form of a demon who is ridiculously strong, but seeing if they can use her as a useful ally. Right now, she's kind of like a carrier pigeon. She can't use any of her mana because of the necklace. And most importantly, anyone with healing magic can beat the living shit out of her. So... It's going to be fun to see where they take it, and I really hope we get a season 2 because I think that dynamic in particular, on top of the Rose dynamic and how she'll continue to believe that he will end up surpassing her, is something that really intrigues me on top of the whole like trying to gain allies for oncoming wars if not battles. This was definitely a very silly episode, there was a lot of slapstick humor, I think one of my favorite jokes that I've seen in this show so far is when he's looking in on his pal, he's, you know, getting a lot better with his magic. The princess is like, oh my god, look at him, he's so majestic. Just, it's basically the difference between having a supportive parent, like, imagine you're at, like, some kid's football game or something, right? One, one parent is like, good job, honey, you're doing great, hip hip hooray, even if you miss that, you, you still get McDonald's after. And then there's the diehard parents who are one step away from being emotionally, if not physically abusive, you call that a play? You're dead to me, son. It's like, that's the difference between Rose and the princess. Very encouraging, loving, and supportive, and I'm going to tear your ball sack off.
Not even an exaggeration. That, that's how intense it gets. But, you know, to be fair, Rose's training does work. And you really do have to be a sick sort of bastard to be able to put up with her. But hey, because of that, we ended up succeeding in this big-ass battle. And somehow roped arguably the strongest character they had on the field to our side. And imagining future battles, like in a Season 2 potentially, where they're like, oh shit, they got the Black Knight, right? They, they, they must have tortured her to death or something. And we could just use that power for ourselves would be freaking fantastic but either way a lot of good stuff coming in the last episode i wasn't expecting anything too explosive i thought it was going to be a chill episode and it kind of was i guess technically but like between blur and just packing on the pounds because freaking that, that bear deserved it if i'm being honest the town just worshiping the ground he walks on he has a goddamn posse a group following him basically asking them to marry her it's just it's so good I was not expecting to enjoy the show as much as I did, and I think they're going to end on a bang. I really hope we get to see a season two, because I think this is one of those isekai that I really want to see at least 25 episodes of, because there is so much potential for what they can do in the first season, and I really see a lot of potential with this story going forward. In general, the production was solid. I really enjoyed the character designs. The color palette was very poppy. It just honestly popped out of the screen, in my opinion. Action animation has some really good moves. I mean, honestly, like, I was really expecting to grow bored of healing magic. I haven't really seen a lot of healing stuff be used in a way that I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, there's elements of it, but the fact that they've constantly found ways to keep healing magic more and more engaging and not just a one-trick pony so it becomes repetitive and boring or just, you're like, that's just stupid. No, like, they've constantly done something cool and the idea of using something that can both heal but also, as we saw against the Black Knight, completely tear down. It's going to be interesting to see how the author, and especially if the same studio works on it, the same team, will continue to flesh it. Because even that quick little training montage with Rose was like really nice. Like the animation was surprisingly better than I was expecting. The intro of this show kind of feel, felt like a comedy version of the intro of Shield Hero. And where they quickly went with their unique ideas left really me impressed. I was like, you know what? I walked in very little expectations to very quickly saying damn i hope they do a season two and if anything i feel more strong than ever wanting at least a season two and shit i could see myself watching this for many seasons if i'm being honest but let me know what you thought because i thought this was a very fun episode i'm glad there's still one more episode to go since all my other shows have basically ended today so let me know what you're feeling down below. Theories, if you got any, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more. And like I mentioned, we have full live reactions over on my Patreon. Hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today we got Sharon, Crowley AC, Derek Nickel, Little Big Trouble, Trap Senpai, and Bryce Dezangles. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. Have a good one.